this is Paul. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to show that this is a certified copy. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was filed in the Clallam County Clerk's Office at 2.21 p.m. July 31st of 2015. Yes. See this superior that you put on top of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really unnecessary. <laughs> Now, we talked about the administrative office of the courts. Yes. We went through the instructions on how to fill these out. Yeah. You can't add words where there is no other. Yes. So you have a little box right there, and you put other, and then you write it in right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I know compliance isn't a really big uh, issue for those that are superior court judges. Pope. But I think you actually have to put this number right there. Yes. The court's address, the telephone number, and then you have to um, decide if there's a clerk's action required. Mm -hmm. Now, order for protection or order weapons, uh, something, no possession or something. Yes. Now, my name is Paul Budnick. I'm the respondent. Yes. Yeah. This is my actual birth date right here. Poop. <laughs> the petitioner's name is Heidi Budnick. Yeah. And that's her birth date right there. Mm -hmm. And then there's the names of the minors. Yes. Zachary Budnick, uh, 13 at the time of the issuance of this. Yes. Bishop Budnick was uh, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Deacon uh, Budnick was 11. Mm -hmm. Maximilian Budnick was 8. Yeah. And then Benjamin Graham Budnick was 4. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll notice that as a male, mm -hmm, Caucasian, and light brown hair, though it's somewhat gray, yeah, 10 feet tall, that's not quite right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm closer to 6 feet tall, I'm 5 feet 11 and 3 quarters inches, yes. And my weight is pretty close, 255, in fact, I weighed myself at the YMCA last week, oh, two weeks ago, yes. When I took a shower, that once a week shower that I've been able to have if I pay two dollars. Mm -hmm. You don't really understand some of my concerns that the Y might be closed tomorrow because of snow. Mm -hmm. I might not be able to shower for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, my eyes are hazel. Mm -hmm. They're kind of a greenish color. Yes, mm -hmm. they've been that color most of my life. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when we look at this, okay, <laughs> I once said that I could actually figure out the ages of my sons just because of a protection order. Mm. Now, July 31st of 2015, Zachary was 13 years old. <laughs> Let's find out how long that was. Uh -huh. Because uh, somebody filled this out other than the petitioner? Yes. But I thought it was her responsibility to fill out all the court forms as the petitioner. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had a little issue with this phone today. Yes. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it keeps doing this. And mm -hmm. As funny as you might think, it uh, is obstructing my rights as an American citizen. Yeah. I'm actually wanting the laws enforced today. So... If you watch this video, because I deleted um, the uh, the whole SD card, you know, if you don't have a copy of the, the videos, right, if they close the 414 YouTube channel, yeah, you probably won't uh, be able to get a copy of them. So I just want you to know that I'm going to copy and paste them and put them in an email whenever... Or whenever the library opens or the senior center, and it might be quite a few days from now. Pope. It's really quite a snowstorm out there. Yes, July 31st uh -huh, of 2015. Mm -hmm. Three years, six months, and nine days ago. Yeah. Now, if I added a three, yes, mm -hmm, to that uh, 13, yeah, that'd be 16 years old. Mm hmm. But knowing that his birthday was in uh, January, yeah, uh, that's six months from July 31st to January 16th. Yes, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, I sent you a screen print from the Peninsula Daily News about my son's graduating at 19 and a half years old. Yeah. Now, Bishop, okay, was 12 years old at the time this was issued. Yes. Yeah. Adding three years, that would be another, um, that would be 15. 
but his birthday is in January, January 4th of 2019. Mm. Mm. He's actually 16 years old, a freshman in high school at the Quilcene High School. Oh. Now, Deacon, mm -hmm, adding a 3 to it's 14, yes, plus another 6 months. He's not quite 15 years old, but he's in 8th grade. Oh, oh, oh. Maximilian, mm -hmm, his birthday's in December. Oh, adding 3 to 8 would be 11. Mm -hmm. 6 months and 9 days, well, he might have just turned 11 or he might have turned 12. Yes, I I think he turned 12. <laughs> and then there's Benjamin's birthday. He's born in September. Oh, three years and six months added to four. He's seven and a half years old or he's eight. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when I think about it right now, these five minors named, yes. Mm -hmm. See, um, you issued this three and a half years ago, three years, six months and nine days ago. Yes. And I've been arrested multiple times for violating it. Yes. Then I spent all that time in jail and went to all those court hearings where you wanted me to get an attorney to motion the court. I said it was criminal solicitation. Now let's see here. Mm -hmm. Did Heidi Lee Budnick fill this out? Ouch. Or did somebody think it really doesn't matter how old his sons are? We're never going to enforce the laws. Now, caution. Okay. Access to weapons. Yes. No. Unknown. Mm. You know the weapon surrender form that you filled out? Yes. Were the forgery of the ex officio superior court clerk on the protection order? Yeah. Her signature is different on this document than on that document. Ooh. Now, the court did not have jurisdiction over the parties. Mm-hmm the minors, and the subject matter. The respondent, mm -hmm, known as Paul Budnick, did not have reasonable notice and an opportunity to be heard. Mm. Notice of the hearing was not served on the respondent by personal service, yeah. service by mail, or service by publication. Mm. The respondent did not receive actual notice of the hearing. Mm. Now, a lot of persons had said, well, as long as we serve you after we have a court hearing, but there's what's known of the hearing. Yes, respondent received actual notice of the hearing. Now, um, it says that on these protection orders, right, that the notice mm -hmm, was before having the court hearing, not service of the protection order after having the court hearing. Yes. Now, let's look at it for just a quick second, okay? <laughs> This idea of actual notice of the hearing. Yes. On June 1st of 2015, right, you did not serve me actual notice of the hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lawsuit in this if you really understand what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. And then on June 12th, you reissued the temporary protection order and had a court date 48 days later. Oh, but you did not serve me actual notice of the hearing that took place on July 31st of 2015. It says not served, not served. Yes. And then you issued an order for protection where I was not served actual notice of the hearing. Now, for all of you that thought there was this exemption to the rule. Yes that you had to have notice of the hearing. Mm. Let's look back at some of these notices of the hearings. Mm. Notice of hearing. Pooch. I did not receive notice of the hearing for the temporary order of the dissolution of marriage. <laughs> I did not receive notice of the hearing of the settlement conference setting, settlement conference setting hearing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a parenting plan, poop, temporary order of support. Oh, look at a motion hearing. Yes. Paul, as a respondent, did not receive actual notice of the hearing. <laughs> 
Now, I know that when you read these court forms and it says actual notice of the hearing. Yes. Respondent did not receive actual notice of the hearing. See, this is something that happens before you have court hearings. Yes. <laughs> Just because you had a hearing where there was no actual notice, that does not mean that I had any notice of the actual <laughs> Now, a uh, motion hearing, yes, mm -hmm. declaration of mailing, <laughs> that is not notice of the hearing. Now, it's a declaration that something has been mailed. Ooch. It's not the actual notice of the hearing. <laughs> now, mail returned unclaimed. Ooh, uh -huh. and then, oops, look at this. Mm, a disillusion of marriage without actual notice of the hearing before you had the hearing. <laughs> now, I know for a lot of judges, they get con they get confused about this. Let's say, oops, petition for order of protection. Yes. Motion hearing. Yes, this is the only ex parte court hearing you can have without actual notice of the hearing to the respondent. Then there's the reissuance of the temporary protection order. Yes, there was no notice of the hearing to the respondent because I wasn't a resident of the state of Washington. Then look at motion hearing, order for protection. I did not receive actual notice of the hearing before you 